What's up, everybody? Happy Wednesday. Um, lots to lots to talk about, as um, I'm sure you expected. So, uh, yeah, I believe I, I mean, I dropped the video last week or earlier this week that um, got a lot of views. So thank you for that. And oh, by the way, real quick. Thank you, everyone, for helping me hit a thousand subscribers. So I recently just hit a thousand subs on my YouTube channel. Um, thank you for that. Uh, more on that later. And for those of you, you know, wondering about the super chat and all that stuff, that still takes a while. YouTube is still, you know, reviewing that and stuff. So, uh, so yeah, just wanted to say a quick thank you for that. Congratulations. Out. Hey, thanks, Javier. Really appreciate it, man. Um, so yeah, lots of stuff, lots of exciting stuff coming for the channel. Uh, working on my first sponsor. And that will be unveiled on my Saturday show, Cafecito and Canes, which will be at the usual time, either 10.15 or 10.30, I'll decide on the fly. Because I am going to the game and the game's early, so we'll see. I need enough time to get there. Randy, what's going on? So, uh, so yeah. Oh, let me take that off. The thanks for a thousand things. All right, cool. So... I'm sure a lot of you, I watched it. I'm sure a lot of you watched uh, uh, Flo's Flow Motion earlier today regarding, you know, what's going on behind the scenes with the program. And it gave me a lot of hope because, you know, I, I saw the article that he was referring to. We all saw it that, you know, Board of Trustees and the president are basically like, you know, they really – could care less about what's going on with the football program is the vibe I got. And there's basically no hope. No, there is a lot of movement happening behind the scenes. And, um, and yeah, that is the, it's good to hear that the right people are now getting involved and it, and it looks like some type of change will be made because unless Manny wins out, which I, let's be honest, that's not going to happen. Not with, you know, the way they're tackling the effort and all that stuff and, you know, just all these missed assignments that drop passes. That all has to do with culture and coaching and development. It's just not there. And I'm sorry, they're not with the rest of the teams they got to face. The teams they got to face the rest of the way, they're not winning out. Let's be honest. Uh, Flo, I was just talking about you, man. Thank you, sir. Sigma, what's going on? Michael, thank you. John, what channel and what time? Uh, for Capacito Don Canes, it's this channel, um, Saturday morning around 10, 15, 10, 30 Eastern time. So Randy, I'm not sure what time zone you're in. If you're in the Pacific time zone, uh, I apologize. <laughs> it's going to be early, but you know, I got to do it that early because I, you know, can't do it at lunchtime. And also I'm going to the game, so I got to get it in, got to get it in early. Terry, thank you very much. Appreciate it. So. We should be having a guest coming in soon, uh, a former Kane that I have had on the show before, to get his thoughts on where the program is right now, because we spoke with him right before the season started, maybe a month before the season. So would love to get his thoughts now that we've played a few games, what he thinks we should do moving forward. But let me know in the comments if you guys saw Manny Diaz's press conference and, you know, the BS he was spewing. I don't know, man. Manny Diaz is starting to give me Al Golden vibes with all the, you know, Al Golden was more of a used car salesman and Manny Diaz is more of a politician. Like he knows how to skirt around these questions. Um, Flo was talking about it earlier. Like, you know, he was asked a pretty direct question about player development and he just kind of pretended not to understand what the question was. Dude, you know what the freaking question is. Like your players, they started here and they're doing this. As they get older, which has been, which has been the case, man, since like 2006, 2007, guys come in, they show some promise as freshmen and they just kind of plateau or they decline, you know? Yep. What's going on, Gage? Yep. Hit the thousand recently. I hit the thousand, was it yesterday? Yesterday or the day before. So I appreciate it, man. Thank you. I'm expecting decommits soon. Yeah, no, let's look. Don't let the decommits 
that are inevitably going to happen. Don't let that discourage you guys. That's all part of, you know, a coaching change. If we make some kind of splash higher, we can salvage a great recruiting class still. And I, and it doesn't, we don't need to spend a ton of money on a splash hire. There's some guys that if they want to not break the bank, you know, Mark Stoops, Joe Brady, I don't know, Hugh Freeze, other guys like that. I think those are guys that aren't going to, you don't have to break the bank for those. The guys you do have to break the bank, the Marios, the Luke Fickles. I think, look, they're all in play. Don't let the media could try to convince you that Miami's broke and they don't have money to pay for a head coach. That is simply not true. That is completely inaccurate. They have the money, all right? I mean, they hired Mark Richt five years ago or six years ago. They went out this offseason and opened the checkbook for guys like T-Rob, Bob Shoup, um, T-Will when we had him for like five minutes. So don't let them fit, don't let them make you think that they cannot afford a big, a big name coach because they can. John, it's been years that upperclassmen come – it, it's been years that upperclassmen come back and regress and don't care why. Um, yeah. Yeah. For whatever reason, Chug Mo Beer, thank you very much, sir. Uh, yeah. Go back to, you remember that number one recruiting class that we had? I'm going back years now. Um, 2008. When we signed the number one recruiting class in the nation, Randy Shannon was the head coach at the time. That was his second recruiting class. Really his first full one because he took over kind of late in the game after Coker got uh, axed. And in 08, we had the number one class, all those Northwestern kids, Corey Harris, Sean Spence, Tommy Streeter, uh, Brandon Washington, Marcus Forston. You remember that class. All looked great as freshmen. All flashed, all you know, made plays here and there. A lot of them didn't start right away because, you know, they're true freshmen. Um, Travis Benjamin, I think, was part of that class. Theron Collier. I mean, ton of guys. And showed promise as freshmen, showed promise as sophomores. That's why we had that nine-win season. And then, you know, just kind of plateaued and dropped off. You know, there were other reasons for that. But, you know, basically they didn't get developed. And that Wisconsin game in the Champ Sports Bowl, you guys all remember that game where – we only lost by a touchdown, but they murdered us in the trenches. That was when they had J.J. Watt and, well, that, that's the only guy I have to say, J.J. Watt. And that kind of exposed us, how soft that team was. How can Simpson say LT has more to learn? No way he shouldn't play. I think, I don't know. I, I think that's Simpson kind of being a company guy and just kind of saying what Coach Diaz is telling him to say. Because Jess Simpson is arguably the best defensive line coach in the game. He's one of the best. And the guy knows defensive linemen. And I'm sure he knows LT special. So yeah, I I I don't know, I don't know what's going on, but I definitely know that you know a lot of players aren't happy. I can tell you that. And yeah, I, I'm sure LT wants to play. I, I totally agree with you. You get the number one player at any position. Their ass is playing, all right? I mean, I remember back in 2000 when we got DJ Williams, number one player in the country. They found a way to get him on the field. Why? There's a couple reasons. Number one, if you – at the time, that was California. We weren't really recruiting California. DJ Williams called us and said he wanted to come here while we were on our rebuild. And, of course, we're not going to turn him down. So he came – you know, he came to Miami – and, you know, as a running back slash linebacker, they found a way to get them on the field. It was as a fullback at the time. That looks good for recruits because now you're telling recruits from California, oh, hey, you know, you, we will welcome you with open arms if you want to come here. That's number one. Number two, any top recruits that might not have come to Miami at the time are going to be like, oh, DJ Williams got playing time right away. Even though they're, that team was loaded, they'll find a way to get me on the field if they, if they see my worth. That's why you need to get guys like Leonard Taylor, James Williams, Cam Kitchens. You got to get them on the field. I'm not saying they got to start, but they got to get more than two snaps. I think James Williams, if I remember correctly, had one snap in the in the Appalachian State game, and he was already pumping up the crowd. I mean, and and that's 
that's why I go back to Al, the Al Golden comparison. Ah, here we go. Our, our guest has arrived. Give me one second. Ladies and gentlemen, former Miami Hurricane, former Kane safety, LeVon Potter. What's going on, man? What's going on? Not much, man. Just catching up the uh, the live chat on, you know, what's going on with the team and stuff and, you know, just, just chatting with them. How's it going, man? It's going good. Going good. Going pretty good. Just finish cooking. Going well? Awesome, man. Uh, I know uh, last time we spoke was right before the season started, and, you know, there was a lot of hype, a lot of excitement, as there always is going into a season. Um, oh, you froze. Are you still there? All right. You froze. Oh, you're back now. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, we were all excited, as we always are going into a season, and then, you know, we've played three games since then, and we have not looked good in any of them. <laughs> Not going to sugarcoat it, and I'm sure you agree. Mm -hmm. um, let me ask you, man what's your what's your impression? And you know, as a former DB, especially you know with all the tackling issues and stuff, I think they were ranked dead last by Pro Football Focus in tackling. Like, what's is that the biggest thing that stood out to you, or what else has stood out to you watching this team? Uh, it just look like they're out of focus. It's like nobody's. Oh, he froze again. Hey, everyone in the chat, is it me freezing or, or LeVon? Let me know. Yeah. Now, yeah, now you're just on froze right now. Yeah, it looks like they're out of focus, man. Like they are playing, I don't know, like it's, you have a 12.30 game or a 12 o'clock game, like they're not showing up to like 1.30. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, man, like you got to go, you got to get ready to go when it's time, when it's kickoff time. Man. That's just like it's not there. It's just like they are. I don't know if it's a lack of focus or I don't I don't know. It it seems like a, a team that's not ready to go when it's kickoff time. Just and and it carries over. I don't know if it's preparation, doing practice, if it's not getting enough uh I don't know, play calling. I don't I don't, I don't know. Yeah, man. Les has a good comment here. Yeah, we're. I was going to ask you regarding like the some of the younger guys. Um, you know, what do you think about? You know, obviously because we we brought in some big big time recruits the last year or two, and we've barely seen them on the field. You know, guys like Leonard Taylor, James Williams. I mean, what do you think of that? Do you think it's true that they might not quite be ready, or or at this point should you, should you just throw them on the field? Like, what what do you think of it when you see that? Uh, I put out a tweet day, two days ago, a day ago. I saw it, yeah. It was just seniority was around. When it, it, just, it seems like just seniority. It's, you see James Williams when he gets on the field. He's, he knows where he's lining up. Out, it, maybe some places not lined up right, and that what the coaches see, but I, a bunch of guys are out of alignment, so I don't know why that would hurt him from playing. And then with LT, I don't Maybe they just want to push the – maybe want to try to redshirt them, I guess. I don't know. Or not use them for this year. But it's like, man, you know, if you want to win, you, I guess – I don't know if it's just job security you feel like you have because in college football, if you don't win, you get fired. Mm -hmm. and it just seems like it's – it's like it's – whatever he wants to – whenever he wants to play the young guys, it's like, okay, they, they can play here or there. And he, then he puts out that the young guys can, if they mess up, they can hurt you. But the old guys, the older guys are messing up right now and hurting you bad. So it's not a difference right now. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And also, I mean, I mentioned earlier, the, the biggest thing for me is the tackling. I mean, I've never seen tackling this bad at the University of Miami. And... I mean, I mean, you were you were in it. You played in the secondary. It's like, is that something that can be fixed during the season, or is it, you know, is that something during the off season? Yeah, you you can fix it. We when I played, we uh, I think it was, I think after the Virginia Tech game, we missed a couple of tackles. That next week, it was a game week, and we were that Tuesday. We had three different tackling drills during that Tuesday. We had one one before practice which was uh, DBs and linebackers. 
And then it was one in the middle of practice. Well, DBs coming down here to tackle running backs. They had tight ends running as running backs and trying to tackle them. Then they, at the end of practice, we had another drill where we had to hit the, uh, we call it the, we just call it the donkey hit, but it's like a, just a regular pad. You have to backpedal, come up forward, and tackle it and drive it back. And it's like, man, you got to, it's tackling is repetition and want to. You got to want to tackle. And if you don't want to tackle, if you're diving at people's legs, you, you, I can move my legs out of the way at any time and, <laughs> and you won't you won't catch them. So you got to, T, Coach T Rob, I, I see his tackling drill, and it's a great tackling drill. It's hit them with your chest and, you know, drive your feet and wrap them and bring them down. And I don't see, I don't see it transferring over. Like guys want to go and just hit guys low and, it's you got guys now that are working on uh their balance that they're able to balance on a uh you know balance on a uh a stool or a table with one foot now so it's like that diving at people's feet is not gonna work uh yeah 100 percent. and i've seen the drill you're talking about that they're showing guys how to you know hook the legs and drive like you know kind of the old school way and yeah. It's not transferring over, but what I see a lot of, as much as the diving at the legs, I also see a lot of, and I don't know if it's guys getting emotional and they just get pissed off and they just go for the big hit instead of wrapping up. I see a lot of that too. And, and you're not going to be able to big hit everybody. I wasn't trying to big hit everybody. I know I, I was a big safety. I was what, 220, 225 playing safety. That's big. Now I wasn't yeah. trying to big hit everybody. It, it's, you, it's guys, it's certain guys, you know you can big hit because they're smaller guys, but you can't just go in and big hit a running back that's 230 himself. You can't go in and big hit him. Or if you do, or you can't go in and big hit a, a receiver that's 215 because he's just going to bounce back and keep running. You can't. You have to go in and, you know, head up, explode your eyes, hit him with your chest, and drive your feet and wrap up. You know, yeah, uh, yeah. Coach Shannon used to always come to me because I, I, I had uh, – I think it was Virginia Tech game or might have been Georgia Tech game. I missed it maybe two tackles. He was like, Why are you missing tackles? I was like, Man, I'm grabbing. I just, I know I didn't wrap up. He's like, All right, don't worry about it. You know what we're going to do? I went through three drills after practice, just learning to wrap up and bring down. We come, like I said, I said it again, the donkey did. But you just hit it and drive it and then turn your body and wrap it up and turn it take it down and it was it worked I, you know had 10 times the next game so yeah just a little tweak and, and it worked a little tweak and it worked but it's got to be the want to and you gotta man you can't just just cut and we have a bunch of seniors older guys who have already graduated or are taking one two three classes this semester dude it, you don't it's you got time after practice to sit there and just go and work out for work for maybe two hours or so, or I mean, an hour, thirty minutes even, just on your tackling. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't know what, I don't know what what it is if they're not just just not putting in the extra work or what. But um, I see you froze for a second, but I know you're still on. Uh, yeah. All right, now you're back. Uh, so yeah, no, we got this game with CCSU coming up this weekend, so. You know, I'll, it's one of those no, games where they, they should be, they should be, and they should be able to get a lot of young guys in there. Mm -hmm. so, what, do you, what do you hope to see this Saturday that you'll be like, all right, maybe they're kind of they've made the maybe the scary, make the necessary adjustments. Uh, we gotta dominate. Like when we played uh, 2008, we played uh, Charleston Southern. We beat them. <laughs> What fifty something to zero, fifty something to seven, six or something. Like that. Right, right, was, yeah. You got to dominate. We played FAMU my uh, 06. We beat them fifty eight, almost fifty eight nothing. You have to dominate those I games. Was there. You to, yeah, yeah. You have to dominate. You can't. It can't be no. Oh, first drive we go and uh, you know we get a three. We we we're three and out and we punt. No, it can't be. It got to be one play, big play, touchdown, and just take these people hard away. Beginning and defense go out, three and out, three and out, three and out. Don't let them pass the fifty. Yeah, yeah, and, and we're also going to see because they they said De'Ara King is very doubtful. That that was Manny Diaz's words. So we're going to see the young quarterbacks. Um, anything in particular you're hoping to see from that? I'm hoping to just see you know 
poise and confidence from them because, you know, it, I, I want to, I want to see someone that's like, okay, they can take this, take control of this offense. If King can't come back for a few weeks. Oh, you froze again. Oh, wait a second. All right, you're back. Yeah, it is you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I can hear it. Yeah. So what do you, what do you, <laughs> on baby duty today? Um, yeah, I, won't keep you, I won't keep you too much longer, man. So yeah, from the quarterbacks, are you you know are you excited to at least see those guys? Because that's what I'm excited about the most. Yeah, I just want them to be you know poised, control, command of the offense. You no, know, just basically know what you're doing. You know, you, you got a guy you you been fan behind the team who's one of the best leaders we had. So you should know what you're doing. No, no coverage, know everything, and and be ready to go. Yeah. No, and especially, you know, they've got a quick turnaround. Uh, the next week, they got a Thursday night game against Virginia. Mm -hmm. uh, this will be the last question I'll let you go. Uh, do you think that that Virginia game, that Thursday night game, is going to be kind of a turning point for the season, that if we can't win that game, that the they're gonna, they're probably going to be making some coaching changes? If I'm not mistaken, Virginia's your coastal opponent, right? And if you don't win that game, it's you trade up hill without a pedal. You trading up at water without a pedal if you lose that game. So it, you're gonna have to come ready to play. It's Virginia, man. I remember 08 when we, overtime, double overtime. I mean overtime. And, I remember, uh, yeah. Sean Spence stripped the ball. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got that. But that was it. Was me? <laughs> it was me with the strip. <laughs> oh, the game winning strip. Yes, yeah, that's right. The game winning strip. The game winning strip. So man, you you got to come to play, and Virginia's gonna be big guys that you know that are ready to play, and they've been. Hey, I've been watching Virginia. They've been putting up some points. They haven't been Virginia. shady. They haven't been the old Virginia that's going to run the ball down and throw it. But, you know, this Virginia here going to run, pass. They're going to – going to have to come to play. Yeah. Yeah. I got it. Would it be a quick turnaround? Hopefully, you know, get Jerry King out this game. Totally let him rest up, and he'll be yeah. ready to go for Thursday. I you know, got it. And a half. Play. I'm going to get the yeah. Anyways, I know you got your hands full, man. I'll let I you go. But, uh, you know, hopefully we see a bit of a turnaround here, man. And if not, I'm hoping changes are made. But I appreciate yeah. it. I just, I just want to see one time, man, just lay to somebody on the sideline. Just I haven't just seen that somebody. once. Yeah. No, not at all. <laughs> just lay to somebody. Just, you know, what are you doing? Something, just something to get somebody hyped. Just something. Man, I, Coach Coco was one of the nicest guys, but if you messed up, he was down your throat. And, as, as, yeah. and it wasn't, you know, he was a nice guy, players coach, but you messed up, he's down your throat. 100%. Yeah, man. All right. Well, I'll let you go. Appreciate you coming on, taking, you know, taking a few minutes to talk some canes with us, um, you know, maybe later in the season. Hopefully by then they've turned it around. We'll have you on again. And, okay. uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll go from there. But have a good one, man. Thank you. All right, man. All right, folks, that was LeVon Ponder. Always love having him on. If you just joined us and you missed it, you can rewind it. You can rewatch it later. But, uh, man, he's, eh, yeah. Uh, I will say this, Bosworth, um, man, he seems like he's trying to be their friend for sure. I mean, he is, I don't see him laying into anyone. I don't see any accountability guys mess up and they stay on the field and still play 95 percent of the snaps i just don't get it and oh less I, I noticed this while i was talking to him um yeah excited to see cody and that on saturday i hope we do because like they said i mean they, they lied to our faces they said cody brown this is his time he's gonna get he's gonna get some some burn he's gonna get some playing time against michigan state playing time to them was two snaps Zero carries. I mean, th did he think that that was going to appease us? Like, what What the hell was that? Great. Oh, great. Oh, thank you, man. Appreciate that. Uh, Javier, I told you guys Cody will start before the season ended. Let's see, man. Let's see. When that guy gets downhill, whoo, that dude's a freight train. Then so is Thad. But Cody has a little more speed than Thad, I think. Man, he's like booming with the Yankees. Yeah, he's he's too soft, man. He's trying to be their friend. He's trying to be the rah-rah guy. And that's fine, 
If look, when he was the defensive coordinator, he could be that. Whereas Mark Richt could be a little bit more of a hard ass. I wouldn't say he was a total disciplinarian, but Mark Richt had guys in line, you know? Manny Diaz is not that guy. I'm sorry, he just isn't. Both QBs have arm talent. TVD has a cannon. Jake is really accurate. Let's see who ends up having the better half. If that's how they split the time. Let me know in the comments how you guys would split the time. This is how I would do it. I would straight up give the first half to TVD and the second half to Jake Garcia and maybe one or two drives at the very, very end, like garbage time at the very end to Matoka, just so he gets his reps, you know. But, yeah, 90% of this game should be TVD and Garcia. They need their reps. They need that experience. And this is the perfect game to give it to them because they might need to be ready for Virginia. And as LeVon said, and I agree, Virginia is not the old Virginia. They they are good. They can air it out. They have a – that quarterback looks like a different dude. Man, yes, that should be the game plan. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Les, what is the – what is the coaching team scared of? If Cody and or Thad or Thumper let them play, we could have a diamond in the rough. Yeah. I At this point, it's beyond understanding. Like, what are you waiting for? Teams are talking to our young guys about transferring. Okay? Those transfer rumors that you're hearing about Leonard Taylor, you know, Flo said it earlier in his flow motion today. There's legs to that. And I'm not shocked. And also, I wouldn't. I mean, I would hate it. Obviously, I'd be pissed. But, you know, if we see that dude landing at Florida, let's say, I wouldn't blame him because, like, you're the number one D tackle in the nation and just mauling people in practice. No playing time. And I don't want to hear this, oh, they're, you know, they're saving a year or whatever. That's probably what they're thinking. But, like, that dude is three and out anyways. So, what, you're going to get two years of, of play from him? And what if he shuts himself down that third year? Then you get like a year and a half from him. No, it makes no sense. If nowadays, if your freshman can play, you play. It's exactly how to give them both a half. Yeah, you you have to. They need their reps. Man, he's, <laughs> players don't fear him. I won't say the first part, but yes, I don't think players fear him at all, at all. Even Larry Coker, who Levon was just saying, seemed like the nicest guy, and he did. I don't think. I don't think Larry Coker was too soft on guys. You would see him rip in the guys from time to time when he needed to. You would see him lay in the guys. I'll give you an example where I started to lose faith in Manny Diaz. It happened in the Alabama game. That play where there was a holding in the end zone that probably should have been called, but you know, you're playing Alabama in a neutral site. You're not the close calls. You're not going to get. You just you have to come in understanding that. You're not going to get those close calls. There was a hold on, I mean, he grabbed like here, the inside of the, the pad, which you're, you're not supposed to, uh, that's holding. And it happened in the end zone, which technically holding in the end zone, in your own end zone is, is, uh, is a safety. I think I know intentional grounding in the end zone is a safety. I think holding in the end zone is also a safety, but anyway, that was the play where, that receiver, that transfer from Ohio State just burned DJ Ivy for a touchdown. Um, that play probably shouldn't have happened, but still. What was Manny Diaz's reaction? Not to rip into a player, but to rip into a referee telling him that's on you. No, no, that's on your defense for allowing yet another third and long, because that was a third and long. I think Manny knows he's fired. His interviews say it all over his face. Uh, he's definitely worried. I don't think he knows he's fired for sure. I think Manny's a little desperate now because I am hearing that practice was a little different today. And, um, you know, it, it does sound like finally he is going to play some younger guys, but it seems like he's doing it begrudgingly because he knows, like, if he doesn't do it now, then when? Bosworth says, if Miami wants the bed versus Virginia, cut bait and put Jess Simpson as it. That's what I was saying in my in my uh, my video a couple days ago. Yes, Jess Simpson would be a perfect interim. And you know what usually happens when you fire a coach and you put in one of these interim guys? Usually the team tends to rally and play a little better. It happens in college and it happens in the NFL. It usually gets you like an extra one or two wins because, you know, 
now the teachers, the teacher that you didn't like is gone. The fun substitute is in. And, and I, I mean, Jess Simpson is just a straight, just a football coach. Manny Diaz. I mean, I guess he's he, to a certain extent, he's a smart defensive guy when that's his only job. That's all he has to worry about. Yeah. He's a good defensive schemer and play caller, I guess with his blitzes, but there's a lot of years of film on him now and people are catching up. But I agree. If you lose the Virginia game, that's it. That's it. Let Manny go. I think Manny goes. Oh, yeah. I already read that. Manny's deal right now. <laughs> John, I said before the season, Manny's seniority, his statement, seniority leads us in the weight room. It's getting freaking old. That's the same, same BS with Al Golden. We were hearing all these uh, – oh, where'd he go? Max. What's up, Max? Uh I don't, during the Al Golden days, we heard the same stuff like, oh, this guy broke this record in the weight room. This guy broke that record in the weight room. Great. It's not translating on the field, so I don't know what the hell you're bringing it up for. Yeah, you don't redshirt the number one D tackle in the country when your team is trash. Thank you. Yes. You don't redshirt the number one anything. You put him on the field. Unless he's like one of these guys that's undersized and he's got to hit the weights for a bit. Fine, I know, but even then, I mean, if they're five star, they're five star. You you put them on the field. Let's see. Manny looks like a guy who could be a good AD, not a coach. He's he is a politician. Seriously, he should run for office one day. That's probably what he's going to do one day. Honestly, who's your backup plan if we can't get Cristobal, Kiffin, Fickle, or Franklin? Mine would be Mark Stoops. Yeah, I think the safe bet would be Mark Stoops. I think you're a solid 9-10 to 10 win team with Mark Stoops, which is what I've been wanting. You're at least a 9-win team with Mark Stoops, at least. You start – I say this all the time. You get to the point where you're winning nine games again consistently because nine games a year, nine wins, you're probably winning the Coastal. You're probably you know going to Charlotte or Atlanta or whatever the hell they play. I think it's – yeah, it's in Charlotte. They play the ACC title game every year. You're going to Charlotte every year for that big game. Maybe you surprise and win it one year. Um, yeah, you, you start doing that, getting your nine wins a year consistently because there's a big difference between seven wins a year and nine wins a year. You get, you're get you averaging nine consistently. You're a solid football team. Recruits look at you differently. They look at you like, okay, Miami seems like they're, they've are they taken that step. They're beating teams they're supposed to beat. Now, if you're five-star Joey Boza, let's say, or Nick Boza, one of those studs that wouldn't even sniff Miami before, they're going straight for Ohio State or Tuscaloosa. Now they're looking at Miami a little different. Now they're cons now the Shamar Stewarts are considering us if we look like a solid football team. Now you start landing the big time. You start keeping the five-star studs at home. You don't do that winning six and seven games a year. Okay? You have to. It's the chicken or the egg thing. you got to win with the talent you have, which is plenty. You have plenty of talent to win eight, nine games every year. Then you land the big time guys. Then you land the Calvin Ridleys, the, you know, the, the, the Devontae Smiths, guys like that. Tyreek X. Oh, three of our best players broke records. Tyreek X and Chance. Oh, okay. Well, I stand corrected on the weight stuff. But whatever. But you but you get what I'm saying, this the seniority stuff. Uh Ocala Kane bringing Mario Ed Reed DP coach. T Rob DC, Michael Barrow, linebacker coach, Jess Simpson, Ken Dorsey. Let's go. Listen, man, that's not a terrible uh I don't hate that lineup. I don't hate that lineup one bit. Can you keep Jess Simpson here? That's the question. Um Campbell and Fitz. Should be in that list. Yeah, I love – Matt Campbell's one of my favorites. Actually, oh, to finish answering that question, because I didn't. Uh, Supreme Goon. Yeah, Mark Stoops, I think, makes you a solid football team. He's older guy, has experience. He was the DB's coach here in the early 2000s, so he knows what a great Miami team is supposed to look like. And he's coached some of the greatest of all time. He coached Hall of Famers in the secondary. So Mark Stoops – Matt Campbell, PJ Fleck, any of those guys I'd be cool with. And if all those, 
Um, all those candidates are exhausted. After that, if you're going to go after a coordinator or like a lower level, like the guy from Coastal Carolina, um, you know, obviously Q Freeze would be also be in that second tier. But you know, Coastal, the guy from Coastal Carolina, I like um, Joe Brady. That's the one coordinator who hasn't been a head coach before, but I would consider. I would consider Joe Brady. He is an offensive genius. He's only 31 years old. You know, he's that new breed of of you know play caller. Flex seems like a terrible fit, dude. So far, yeah, he does seem corny. I agree, but he, he seems to have his teams ready to play. That's all I'm gonna say. Memphis coach, yeah. Would so you wouldn't take Mario or Orgeron, right? Oh wait, no X players. I mean, I would take an X player if they have experience. Mario is an X player. Um, Ken Dorsey is an X player. Ken Dorsey has been – Ken Dorsey was the Carolina Panthers quarterback coach when Cam Newton took them to the Super Bowl, okay? Usually the next job after the progression from – it's from quarterback coach. Usually it's offensive coordinator next. So NFL quarterback coach to offensive coordinator seems like the right transition for Ken Dorsey. And I – I've been saying it since he played here. Like, Ken Dorsey is a future coach. So I'd be okay with that. As long as you have a head coach that has experience, I'd be okay with Ken Dorsey and, you know, guys like that. Michael Barrow was also a solid linebackers coach. Uh, Bosworth, John, Barry Jackson, article says one trustee said we need like $50 million for Crystal Ball. If we play. <sighs> that, again, if, you know, I speak to people who are in the know and you heard one of them on his show earlier today from the car. And, uh, he says that that's complete BS. And I agree. It sounds like BS. So when he said that, I was like, okay, yeah, it sounded, that didn't sound right. So I wouldn't worry too much about the buyout stuff. It's not so much flow had a great point. It's not so much the money. It's the, I mean, money's important obviously, but it's the control that they're going to have. Are they going to have somebody breathing down their neck the whole time? Or is it going to be like, Hey, you, you know, you handle, you handle the football. And I love the idea of having an AD specifically for football because it has worked in other places that, you know, that AD, his, his focus is football. I, I, I would love that. I would love that. I don't want Mario no, no more, but they're connected to Miami. That's obviously not working except for Butch Davis. Catalyst, uh, Mario did want to coach here in 2015. Does he still want to coach here now? Listen, it's his alma mater. He won a national championship here. He coached, he was a co he was on the staff for some very talented teams. So for that reason, I don't think he's we're ever out of it for, for Crystal Ball. Lane could be a sexy two-year girlfriend for the chick leaves for better pastors. Um, depends how well he does here. I would love that Lane Kiffin offense here. I think it would fit perfectly. How about one of the coaches out of North Dakota State? They literally never lose a game in the last 10 years. I wouldn't put high priority on the lower level of college football, but I'd be open to it. True, you'll get three years top, but will brew excitement. It will. Orgeron. I don't, I don't know. Orgeron seems like a guy to me that's like, I, he benefited a lot from Joe Brady and Joe Burrow. I mean, that's obvious. He's a solid football coach. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I'd be open. I'd be open to Orgeron. He is getting a little older, but you know, I, he certainly would have us more prepared for big games. That is for sure. Can we get Hugh Jackson? Possibility. Uh, is Miami administrators serious about football? I mean, they haven't been in the past, but mm, it seems like people behind the scenes are scrambling a little bit more now because they're starting to they're starting to feel the heat from you know people who do care, the fans, and I, I am confident changes will be made if. It doesn't all of a sudden turn around on the field. 
uh, we will have to use Ed Lee for interim coach. No, I don't. He doesn't have coaching experience. He's never coached before. No, interim coach will be Jess Simpson. That's my pick. It, exactly. Yes. Orgeron is done. He's probably done at LSU. I mean, there's those, you know, there's allegations and stuff out there. And I, th I think it was him. Don't quote me on that. Yeah, there was some scandal going on in the offseason, and then it kind of disappeared. I don't know what, was, what it was. Uh, Mario Vilk. Mario would kill it down here in recruiting. Yeah, of course. No doubt he gets top 10 classes yearly here. Absolutely. Let's see what else we got. I'll probably be on for like 15 more minutes, guys. Bring Prime to my <laughs> Uh, I think he's the future FSU coach, man. One day, maybe not like next year or anything, because I think Norvell is done. I mean, zero and three? Are you kidding me? With all the transfer portal guys you got, yeah, but we're talking about team morale. Uh, hell no to Dion. Yeah, I want Morgan. If not, then Highsmith for AD. You th you mean Dan Morgan for AD? You know what he? Wouldn't wouldn't hate that. I mean, I would like either one. Let's see. I'll note to Dion Luke Fickle. Luke Fickle, I think, is tied with Mario as my favorite. But yeah, no, definitely lots of options, guys. There's lots of options for us to go get. Um, thank you, Les. Appreciate it. Yes, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe. Ah. <sighs> But yeah, as for what I want to see, just to switch gears a little bit, what I want to see on Saturday, I need to see some confidence and assertiveness from those quarterbacks. Those two, TBD and Garcia, need to play most of, if not the entire game. This is not a game for the walk-ons. I'm sorry. You, you need to have – these young guys are next in line. They got to play most of that game. The starters, give them – you know, the veterans, give them like a quarter. This is the young guys' game. So Ramorgan Zoe has way more pull. Yeah, I can see that. Mario bury the damn chain in the rings. Uh, maybe we'll see. Hopefully, that is a conversation we'll get to have if he comes here. He's far more successful in two levels of football, way more successful than Manny Facts. Uh, which which person are you referring to in particular? You're talking about Mario Deuce. Well, Manolo did the slip and slide again versus UVA. The guy did a sl slide slide on slip and slide dog. You mean you mean sidestepping the questions in the press conference? How about Tom O'Brien? DC almost beat us in 2001. How old is Tom O'Brien? Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. I remember Tom O'Brien, but that dude was old then. He was 72 years old. Where is he? Is he even coaching now? No, he hasn't coached since 2012. He was at NC State. Uh, yeah, that would be a no. <laughs> that would be a no. Maybe 10 years ago. What about ex-NFL coaches? If they had success in the college level, yes. Because remember, head coach in the NFL, head coach in college, two completely different things. Head coaches in the NFL don't have to recruit. Okay? It's, it's a different animal. Uh, Morgan Hot up and coming executive. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I am a massive Dan Morgan fan, especially as a player. Because I I I've always I've always loved middle linebackers. Uh Zach Thomas is my all-time favorite dolphin. Dan Morgan was playing around the same time. So of course, you know, him, Jonathan Vilma, I love those guys. So yeah, we'll be totally open to that. There's a ton of options. But, yeah, back to what I want to see Saturday. Poison confidence from the quarterbacks. That O-line better not miss a freaking block. Um, but also, I want to see, because we haven't seen this all season. I don't know if it's a King problem or a Rhett Lashley problem. I guess we're going to find out on Saturday. Because there were times where King could have slid the protection over, and he didn't. There were times where King could have told his running back, hey, that guy's blitzing, block him. You never see him pointing at a blitzer. 
I never noticed that. If you if you did tell me, because I didn't see it, um, I need to see our young QBs doing that. So, because a lot of picking a lot of picking up a blitz is communication, and I don't see any of that. I just see our our players are just conditioned to do what they're told to do by the coach. And, you know, no audibles are getting called. It's just, okay, do what the play is. No matter how the defense is lined up, do what the play call is. Which is why you have these guys unabated to the quarterback murdering De'Ara King. You know, it's sometimes it's the O-line missing a block, but not always. I mean, one lo- one blocker can't block three guys. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch steve breakdown on Twitter and on YouTube. It's fantastic. There were certain times where, yes, Zion Nelson just whiffs on a block because he stepped inside when, you know, he just had one guy to block. Again, they're conditioned to play one way and they don't have, they don't have actual football instincts. So he, he whiffs on that block. And we saw that a few times. Guys don't know how to block stunts and it's, it's just bad. But there's other times where you got three guys blitzing on one side. And if King tells his blocker, block that dude, or if they audible something to like a run play up the middle, we'll gash them for 10 or 12 yards. I don't see that. I need to see that from these quarterbacks. Miami also doesn't create passing leads for a small QB. That's a good point. Uh, Jake Garcia, how tall is Jake Garcia? 6'2", 6'3"? Let's see, he's probably like around 6'2". Jake Garcia. I'm not going to look at the school's height and weight because that's always BS. Um, six two and a half. Okay, yeah, he's like six two. Better than five ten. That makes a huge difference. TVD six four. So and they're athletic, so that helps. Uh, where's my mouse? There it is. Who would you like to keep, John? If we get a new coach, there's quite a. I mean, this is a good. This is a pretty good assistant staff, especially on defense. Manny is the main problem. Manny and Coach Lashley. I would love to keep. T. Rob would love to keep DVD. I would love to keep Jess Simpson. Basically, those three on defense. Um, I would love to keep Rob Likens. But then again, that drops thing. I don't know if that's a Likens issue or if the players just aren't encouraged to put in the extra work in the jugs machine. I don't know. The drops are freaking. I thought that was going to be a thing in the past. I thought they'd solve that problem, but that's the drops have been killing me. So maybe Likens, maybe not. I don't know. Um, I mean, that's pretty much it. Those those four guys I would love to keep because oh, and, and Coach Coach Ish, those guys are killers on the recruiting trail, and a couple of them have already proven track records of developing talent, especially T. Rob. There are certain guys I don't want to let go of on the staff. Likens, T. Rob, DVD, and that's it. Yeah, Kevin Beard. Kevin Beard did a great job as the wide receiver coach. The one year that he was here, he was getting two-star guys like Rashawn Scott, you know, bossing people, and, you know, um, who else was on that team? God, who was – I think Barrios was like a freshman on that team. That was 2015, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, the the receivers were making plays that year. Like, that offense put up decent pass numbers, I remember. Kevin – and I, I don't remember a ton of drops that year. So, yeah, Kevin Beard for wide receiver coach would not be opposed to that at all. John, any said he's in, uh, in that DVD collection. Is that just <laughs> uh, That's mostly – that's PS4 games. And then on the right are – I used to have a library of DVDs and Blu-rays. I got rid of most of them. I just kept, like, like a few classics, Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, stuff like that. The U Part 1 is back there. Um, yeah, I, I had like a library. It just, it was crazy. It took up too much space. Uh, new head coach, all his staff. Wouldn't hate that either. If there's one guy I could keep, it's T Rob though. If you cannot touch that guy, please give me him. Likens a good coach. He needs to bench the seniors. I don't know if, is that his call? I think that's more a Manny Red Lashley call who plays on offense. Because... Keyshawn has been our best receiver. Oh, that's another thing I want to see Saturday. I want to see Keyshawn Smith get targeted like 10 times. I want to see Elijah Arroyo get get like 8 to 10 targets. Um, I need to see – 
Again, O-line, don't miss your assignments. I want to see better communication. I need to see our running game gash some people. I need to see those young guys, Thad Franklin and Cody Brown, give them some burn. Remember, most of those receivers are not Likens guys. Most of, oh, the older guys, like Pope, Wiggins, those guys. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Oh, what do you guys think about Pope playing DB in practice? I know that's probably more of like a practice squad thing. They just need bodies there. It's probably not going to get much playing time at DB, but you know what? Good for him. And he could still, someone told me this, he could still redshirt. I think it was Steve in our chat. He could still redshirt and get two more years of eligibility if he decides to leave at the end of this year. I wish Mark Pope the best because I think that guy, he's put in a lot of work, especially this year. And it's a shame that we might not get to see it, but oh yeah, exactly. Hope the best for him. Okay, let's see. First half on TV. Oh, TVD the first half, and let's see Garcia, aka the kid, in the second half. Manolo thinks he can make Pope the next Sam Shields. <laughs> Sam Shields had at least had size and like blazing speed. Next Sam Shields. Nah, I, I don't think so. He doesn't have the physique or the size, unfortunately. He has to move, not a coaching decision. Yeah. Should we start the youth movement now? Yes, that's what I'm saying. That's what I, the main thing I want to see this game is unload the young guys, see what you have in them. Oh, and Chase Smith, I need to see that dude at linebacker. Somebody earlier asked that in the chat. And, yeah, I don't know what they're – I mean, physically he looks ready. Maybe mentally he's not, but screw it. Get, one of the things that will get him mentally prepared is getting him some reps in an actual game. Hope is an athlete, might as well try. Yeah. Why does Miami want to hurry up offense when we just have a bunch of false starts? Catalyst, that is an amazing point. Um, it feels like we run into trouble more often than not with that with that hurry up offense. And it's like half the time we're hurrying up to it's first and twenty five, and we're hurrying up just to run the ball. I or we're hurrying up, and you know, because the blockers don't have a, a second to like see who they're blocking, they get gashed. I think LT is gone. I really, 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 really hope not. I really hope not. I need to see that too this Saturday. So the kids in there, like Butch said, in 95. Yes. Thank you. I like the idea of Pope playing corner. Look at Sam Shields. Again, doesn't have the size of Sam Shields. I mean, but oh, let's see. Let's see what happens. Start Steed at middle linebacker, play Huff at weak side. Listen, Steed, who was looking not very good in the first two games, looked very good against Michigan State. He was one of the few bright spots. So I... I'd like to see him. I think he, he did earn more playing time, so I would like to see that. Uh, Huff, I don't know where they've been hiding him. But, yeah, when you start the U movement, do you lose the older guys? Here's my rebuttal to that. Who cares? I don't care if you lose the young guys at this – or the older guys at this point. Could not care less because they're not performing. And also, you know, a lot of them are in their last year, so who, who – Gives a crap anyways. Uh, it's only hurting Manny not to play LT now. Yeah, 100%. All right, folks. I think I'm going to – if you guys have one last good question, I'll sneak it in. But, yeah, I, I think I pretty much cut my point across. I, I need to see them unload that that bench because, look, I'll give you an example, that one that always sticks out to me. Tommy Streeter. Tommy Streeter did not get to play until 2011 when Al Golden came. That was Al Golden's first year. One of the few things he did right was he saw this six foot five gazelle of a wide receiver who could fly, just burning people and mossing people. And he was just like, um, why is he riding the bench? He's playing. And in 2011, he that combo of him and Travis Benjamin, lethal wide receiver combination. Our defense couldn't stop anything but our offense was very good in 2011 with them and lamar miller and tommy streeter was a big reason why that's my point 
why he didn't play during the Randy Shannon years. A lot of people said he was in his doghouse. I don't know what the Thomas Drew was a tease. Yes. My point is just because the coaches say, oh, they're not ready, doesn't mean that's right. Okay. They could be dead wrong. Leonard Taylor can go out there and have a water boy kind of day where he sacks the quarterback like 38 freaking times. Okay. We don't know. So I'll leave it at that. Uh, I will be doing my Saturday morning show. And like I said before, I will be unveiling my first sponsor. Uh, so tune into Cafecito and Canes this Saturday. That will be between 10.15 and 10.30. I'll announce the time like a day or two before on Twitter. And um, so follow me there. Follow me on Instagram, all the socials. And I'll keep you guys up to date on what we'll be doing, what we'll be doing Saturday. But I will be at the game. And, uh, you know, if you pass by and you see me, come say what's up. And, uh, yeah, thanks for the chat, guys. And thank you for LaVon Ponder for coming on again. Um, oh, let me sneak this in really quick. Did you see Footballville interview with Earl Little? I did not. I heard it was really good and really eye-opening. I may go ahead and watch it right after I'm done here. But thank you, Sigmund. Anyways, guys, as always, we ride or die here. It's all about the you. Go Canes. I'm out. Have a good night, guys.